It's my pleasure today to be able to unveil Signal, the modern enterprise authorization platform. As part of this demo, I'm going to show you how Signal can deliver just-in-time access to sensitive data, eliminating long-standing ambient permissions and answering the question as to whether a user should have access to sensitive data. Now, before we get started, let's talk about a fictitious company called Wholesale Chips. The architecture you see in front of them is the demonstration architecture that we'll use to showcase signal functionality today. Wholesale chips are a large semiconductor manufacturer supplying chips to other large organizations. And while this company might be fictitious, they share a lot of similarities with many of the real organizations Signal is working with today. On the left here, you can see Wholesale Chips has four systems of record that they're integrated with. Azure Active Directory is their IDP, Salesforce for CRM, Workday is their HRIS, and ServiceNow CSM to manage the cases for their valued customers. Each of these data sources is feeding into Signal's graph directory. On the right, you can see two applications integrated with Signal. The first, a third-party SaaS application, Salesforce, and the second, an internal billing application developed within wholesale chips to better cater to the needs of their customers. These applications will leverage the Signal policy engine and the underlying graph directory in order to determine who should have access to data and will allow Signal to grant access just in time when a user requests it. We'll start our demonstration in the Wholesale Chips Billing Management application, an internally built application specifically used by support representatives in order to offer support to customers. Here you can see that I'm logged in as Alejandro. Alejandro is located in Massachusetts, has a position of customer support within the IT department. Now, as a customer support representative, Alejandro has unfettered access to customers within the bounds of his role. He's able to move from customer to customer, see information about the customer, as well as take action on them. There's one customer in particular that I'm interested in, and that's Glover PLC. I can see that they're located in Massachusetts. They have two invoices that are currently active. And as a customer support representative, I'm able to issue a refund on any one of those invoices. In this case, I'm gonna issue a refund simply because I can. For many organizations, there's a fundamental question as to whether someone should be performing a task on a specific customer or looking at sensitive data at any point in time. This is where Signal is able to help by providing just-in-time access management. So let's have a look at Signal. From the dashboard, I can see that we have policies that we'll speak a little bit more about momentarily. We only have one configured there at the moment. We have applications, a third-party SaaS application, Salesforce, and the internal billing management application that we just saw. And data sources, four of them in this case, synchronizing data into Signal's dynamic graph directory. Let's dive into the customer support policy that exists there now. And we can see that this policy allows all users to access all data. It doesn't seem quite right, but unfortunately, it's the reality for many organizations. With Signal, we're able to provide just-in-time access management and give it to the right people. So let's make that change now. What we're going to do is we're going to say customer support users. In this case, the Signal administrator has said that those users are defined as people with a title in Azure Active Directory as, as customer support. They're able to access customer data if they're both in the same location and they have an active case assigned to them for that customer. Now with these policy snippets, the signal administrator has been able to define exactly what these mean. In this case, the user is the assignee on a ServiceNow case where the customer is the account. So now we have a slightly more stringent policy that's gonna require that a user is justified before they access sensitive data. So why don't we save this? We're going to apply that policy to the two applications that are currently integrated with Signal. 
but let's dive into how the policy graph enables us to make these policy decisions. You can see that there's a number of different nodes and colors and relationships between different nodes on the screen here. If I choose this red node, I can see this is an Azure AD user. It's Alejandro's user account inside of Azure AD and contains a number of different user attributes. It has a relationship to another node. This is Alejandro's account in ServiceNow. There's a range of attributes here as well, specifically from ServiceNow synchronization. And I can see there's a number of different relationships that this account has within the graph. Each of these represent cases that exist inside of ServiceNow that Alejandro is assigned to. There's another relationship here, and this is for customers. And so there's a relationship end-to-end -end between a ServiceNow customer, a ServiceNow case user, and all the way back to an Azure AD user. This also extends on the other side to showing relationships to Salesforce users, Salesforce customers, and beyond. And you can see that we can break down organizational silos and data silos within systems of record by bringing all of this data into a single organizational graph. So let me show you a little bit how those data sources are configured. Here, if I come to ServiceNow, I can see that there's fairly simplistic connection configuration information to enable me to synchronize data from ServiceNow. The sync schedule allows me to synchronize changes as they happen from the ServiceNow instance. If I come to entities, I can see some of those entities that we just saw in the graph, users, customers, and cases. Here I can see the attributes that can be configured for ServiceNow users, as well as the relationship configuration to join users from ServiceNow to users in other systems, such as Azure AD. In this case, I'm using the email address on a ServiceNow user to match to the email address of an Azure AD user in order to create that relationship. Similarly, for entities like customers, I'm able to create a relationship via identifiers such as account codes or IDs between ServiceNow and Salesforce. So I now have a much more restrictive policy where customer support users can only access data in specific circumstances. So let's come back to the wholesale chips application and perform the same tasks we performed before. If I come to this Mercatile account, you'll see that I'm no longer allowed to access this customer. Similarly, if I search for Glover, I can see I also don't have permission to this customer. So I know that I'm a customer support representative. I know that I'm in the same location as Glover. And the only thing missing here is that I don't have an active case assigned. So let's come back to ServiceNow and do a search for Glover PLC. I can see that Glover has one single case open, but there's no one currently assigned to it. So as Alejandro, within ServiceNow, I'm going to assign that case to myself. And I'm going to update that case. So per that policy, I'm a customer support person in the same location as Glover PLC with an active case assigned between me and Glover. So now when I do a search for Glover here, I can see that I can now access the information for Glover. I can also take action on the invoices that they currently have active. And so here, I'm going to issue a full refund because I have a business justification to do so. Now, because access is centralized within Signal, we get the benefit of having fully auditable access control. And so here you can see that the billing application has requested access from Signal, and we've sent an allow response here. We've also logged the policy that was in action when the user attempted to access it. Now, if your organization is anything like wholesale chips, you'll use more than just internally built applications to store user and customer information. In the case of wholesale chips though, they use Salesforce. 
So as part of Alejandro's workflow, not only does he have to issue a refund inside of the billing management application, he also has to come perform tasks on order objects inside of Salesforce. Here, if I come to the Glover PLC order that we saw in the billing management application, you see it's in a processing state. As Alejandro, I need to cancel that processing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the status on that account, and I'm going to say that a refund has been issued. If, on the other hand, I was just poking around inside of Salesforce, and I came to the Mercatile account and attempted to update the status, we see that because I don't meet the criteria of that policy, I'm not able to access that information. I can also see that reflected in the signal access logs to see different assets being attempted to be accessed by Alejandro in this case, and the access decisions that are associated with them. Now at the end of Alejandro's workflow, it's expected that he would come back and update this case with all of the work that he's completed. So in this case, let's say that he's successfully resolved this case and he's done so by issuing a refund. It was issued. At this point, we're now ready to close this case. So the only case for Glover PLC has now been closed and Alejandro is assigned to it. If you remember, when we were configuring this policy, we specified that an active case had to be assigned. And now that this case is closed, we would expect that Alejandro should no longer have access to this customer data. So let's come back to Wholesale Chips Billing Management application and let's do another search for Glover PLC. You'll see that I no longer have access or permission to access that customer as Alejandro. Similarly, if I come to Salesforce and attempt to update this order item after the fact, I no longer have access to this data either. Now this is incredibly important because it shows that Signal is granting just-in-time access as a user needs it. And we're getting rid of long-standing permissions that would allow stale access to, to permeate through an organization. So I hope you've liked this demo and understood how Signal can provide just-in-time access management to an organization. Thanks for watching.